We've got about 10 minutes left, and I just want to get each of you to talk to me a little bit about, we've been through the protests, and, and voices are being heard loud and clear. Where do we go tomorrow? Where do we go a month from now um, so that we're not having this special again? Um, and we'll, we'll work our way down the line. Commissioner, go ahead. It, uh, for you, I guess the question is, what does a new recruit have to hear from an instructor right now so that the interaction ends where people go home safe? Oh, that's a good question. You know, we graduated the class uh, just last week, and I told them that they are starting their careers in a new era of policing. And when new recruits start, we'll tell them they are starting in a new era of policing. Sure, we have a consent decree, and so we have sort of the blueprint of what people are asking for, but now it needs to go even further. And so training now has to be about what police are really going to be asked to do. And how do we really train the new police officer to be a community-oriented, community-minded police officer that knows how to build relationships and still can provide public safety, even in the most tense situations, but has empathy, has compassion, and understand the, the, the culture that we're working in, the, uh, the culture of the community, and what's needed for that community. And so, yes, all of the best practices of use of force, Fourth Amendment, uh, search and seizure, stop, all of those things need to be really taught and retaught constantly to the officer. But it's really about teaching the officer how to be a part of a community and be the, the guardian of the community, not necessarily the warrior. Recruitment has not stopped since then, but we now have to figure out who has the right temperament to be members of the policing profession, more particularly the Baltimore Police Department, because it is changing and it will change, and we embrace that change. Jane, we were saying before we got on there, part of the change, at least that you believe in, is being a part of everyone's life, and that's been very important to you. Talk to me about how moving in the, for in the future that's important. Well, I think, you know, getting engaged with people, yes, I'm, I've been very fortunate, actually, to have the opportunity to be involved in mentoring uh, with a young man for the past almost 11 years, and, and he's really, you know, it, it's more than mentoring now. I mean, there's no question. That, um, but I think that, you know, we've, I've heard all of us talk about looking the other way, and, and what I hope going forward is that it becomes harder for each of us to just turn away. The other day, I saw a seven-year-old on the squeegee corner, and I was like, I was just, I was like, look, this isn't safe. And his, the older guys he was with were giving me a hard time, et cetera. It's fine, I understand that, but it should outrage all of us that a seven-year-old finds it necessary, or older kids find it necessary to take a seven-year-old with them out there in a really dangerous situation. I mean, let's face it, we've had bad situations, we've had bad encounters. But I think that, that going forward, this is an opportunity for every, each of us as an individual to decide if we're able, is how can we make a difference? And that sounds so altruistic, but I really mean that, is how can you make a difference in another individual's life? There are many, many people, young people in this country that they have no one to have their back. I mean, I'll just give you a quick example. You know, just imagine a young guy growing up in the city of Baltimore in foster care, right? Gets his way through high school, may get into college. Somewhere along the line, he's probably going to miss a payment. Somewhere along the line, his credit's going to go bad. So what's he faced with now? 22% interest rates. Hmm. So there are structural changes that need to be made so that individuals have a much better chance of being able to succeed. And each of us individually, if we're able, should and, and can think about how we can help make that happen. I'm not talking about become a banker. I'm talking about using your own resources to really substantively help and assist someone to become more independent and have a more sustainable life. There are so many hurdles to, to people who grow up, some of the young people who grew up in the city of Baltimore that will, they will never be able to clear because of the way the structure is set up. And each of us individually, if we are able, can really think about how we can assist another individual.